Well, God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us for another Tuesday night Bible study. I tell you, God has been good to us and how blessed we are to be in Bible study one more time. Can you actually believe this? It's been a whole year that we have been doing Tuesday night Bible studies uh, through Conference Line, YouTube, Facebook, amen. However we've been doing it, praise God, through technology. No one expected that things would last as long as they have lasted. However, amen, God is in control and he's in charge. And we thank God for the omnipotence of God. Amen. And we thank God for the sovereignty of God. He's a sovereign God and he does what he wants to. Amen. And we bless and praise God for everything and all things. And so tonight we're going to begin a new series uh, that begins... Um, in Psalms 23, Psalms 23, a familiar passage of scripture to those of us who are in Christianity and have been here. We knew it, uh, we learned it while growing up as children, amen. And yet, praise God, sometimes we have become so familiar with it until we have disrespected uh, the importance and the value of this particular Psalm. And uh, we're going to begin it, amen, by reading the entire psalm. Let's start with the word of prayer first. Father, we want to tell you thank you tonight. Dear Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you for this time, this opportunity, just to share from the word of the Lord. God, we thank you that you brought us up until now. It is our prayer, dear Lord, that you look on us and bless us in a mighty way. God, that you would help us increase our understanding Give us more wisdom and knowledge that we may be able to fulfill the mandates that you've placed on our lives. Now take us through the things that we must go through. Lead us into all truth and righteousness. For these are the blessings that we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, Psalms 23. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We read this particular Psalms um, during our time of loss. We quote it uh, for comfort in difficult times, and we inscribe it even on plaques. We find this Psalm written on hospital walls, in, uh, in prison rooms, jail cells, courtrooms. We find this particular psalm. Do more, according to Max Lucido, he asked the question, do more beloved words exist, framed and hung in hospital rooms, scratched on prison walls, quoted by the young, and whispered by the dying. In these lines, sailors have found a harbor. The frightened have found a father, and strugglers have found a friend. But could it be that the amazing legacy contained in this psalm is sometimes overlooked because we have become so familiar with it? Do we really understand that it is in this psalm alone that we have all we need to live successfully in this world and be prepared for the one to come? The purpose of this particular study is to take an in-depth look at one of the most beloved portions of the scriptures of all times, the 23rd Psalm, uh, to mine spiritual riches from every phase and word, from every, from every phrase and word, seeking for understanding as one would search for a hidden treasure. Now, let's understand one thing. Psalm 23 it is a part of the sequence of Psalms that explores the symbolism of the Lord as the shepherd of his people. 
It is said that Psalms 23 is a continuation of Psalms 22, and it also continues into Psalms 24. So really, all three Psalms, Psalms 22, Psalms 23, and Psalms 24, could be combined into one Psalm. However, for the sake of clarity, and for the sake of explanation, uh, in Psalm 22, God is portrayed as the Good Shepherd. That is the chapter, uh, the prophecy foretelling the death of the Lord Jesus Christ for the sins of mankind. So when you read Psalms 22, it talks about that. And then we come into Psalms 23, uh, the subject of the study that we're in now. He is portrayed as the great shepherd who seeks lost sheep and brings them into his flock. And there we find in Psalm 24, the Lord is the chief shepherd who is portrayed as coming in power and glory as king of kings. Most biblical scholars conclude that Psalms 23 was written by David when he was a young man serving his father Jesse uh, as a shepherd. In these six verses, David shares a spiritual analogy of the Lord as the shepherd uh, and his people as sheep, drawn from the extensive knowledge and experience which he has gained as a shepherd. As a good shepherd, David knew his sheep by name. His sheep knew his voice, and they followed him. David knew that a good shepherd never leaves the sheep alone, and that he searches for lost sheep to restore them to the flock. The shepherd provides for the needs and protects them from predators. Jacob was actually the first person in the Bible to use the shepherd metaphor for God. Uh, from that time on, the Holy Spirit repeatedly uses the image of a shepherd as exemplified by his prophetic word about the coming Messiah. In Isaiah 40 and 11, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them into his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Jesus identified himself as that shepherd uh, in John 10 verses 11 through 16. He is also called the great shepherd in Hebrews 13 and 20. And he's also referred to as the chief shepherd Shepherd in 1 Peter 5 and 4. We need a shepherd because we can easily become lost. I want to pause right there. Everyone needs a shepherd. Every sheep needs a shepherd. Regardless of how old you may be, regardless of how young you are, regardless of how long you've been a member of a particular church or whatever the case may be, we all need a shepherd. We need someone that can lead us into truth and righteousness, someone to show us the way, someone who God has anointed, someone who God has called, someone whom God has chosen for this particular task. Jesus, he is our shepherd. We all need a shepherd. Now, pastors are a form, or pastors are shepherds as well. They become shepherds of the individual flock, of the individual church membership. We all need a pastor in our life. We all need someone to guide us with decisions. They don't have to make the decision for us, but just to guide us in the right direction, just to show us the way of the Lord. Now, if you as a sheep, if you as sheep cannot become subject to the shepherd, then something is wrong with you. It is imperative. It is imperative that we understand what a shepherd does. Now, like sheep in the natural world, we have an herd instinct to follow the crowd. And so many people right now, nowadays, they're following the crowd. They're following after the crowd and the heats to see what the crowd is doing. Isaiah says this in Isaiah 53 and 6. Uh, he says, all we like sheep have gone astray and turned to our own sinful ways. Jesus warns us in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, to enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. 
However, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who will be that find it. Wide is the gate is for un is for the untamed herds of this world. There are so many persons who are untamed, unlearned, undisciplined, and who do not want to follow instruction. And because they cannot follow instruction and go through a narrow gate or go through a narrow path, the gate is made wide for them. However, the only problem with that is everything can go in. We ought not want to follow the crowd just because a crowd is doing something that doesn't necessarily make it right. However, as men of God, as women of God, we must be obedient sheep and we must listen and take heed to the voice of the shepherd. Now, narrow is the pathway traveled by the shepherd in his sheep. There's only one shepherd and one door uh, to his fold. This is why we must follow in the footsteps of the shepherd and his flock. As we begin this awesome spiritual journey, uh, we're going to be doing just that. Uh, you know, as we go through Psalms 23, my God, it is just awesome. I just read to you the King James Version of Psalms 23. Let me read to you the Passion Translation of Psalms 23. The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. He tracks me in an oasis of peace in a quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of the deepest, darkest fear, will never conquer me. For you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I never be lonely for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to forever be with you. Oh, my God. Isn't it awesome how there are so many various, there are so many various and different translations and interpretations of this particular psalm? Well, let's get into it. Let's go to chapter one and you'll be able to download chapter one uh, through our website, just go to resources and you'll see chapter one. And we want to talk about the shepherd, the person. He is my shepherd. Now, the first phase of this psalm is the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He made it personal. My shepherd. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, David makes a declaration, a thesis statement as it were, and then spends the rest of the psalm proving it. Let's examine this opening verse word by word. The, he is not just any shepherd, he is the shepherd. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. We're not just talking about any shepherd, but we're referring, we're referring to the Lord as being the shepherd. All roads do not lead to God. Jesus said that verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. There's one door and one sheepfold, and that is Jesus Christ. He is the one way to God. The Bible declares in Acts 4 and 12, 
neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Then we look at the word Lord. What is Lord? The Hebrew term is translated 6,800 times in the Old Testament. It is the special unique name for God. It is not a title such as given to the lords and ladies of England. It is God's name revealed to Moses. In Exodus uh, chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, it says, Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus should I say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Wow. I am. Present tense. Not I was. Not I will be. Not I will become. But he says, I am. In essence, God was saying to Moses, This is my name. I want you to know it so you can call me by it because I want you to have a personal I want to have a personal relationship with you. That name is I am. Fill in the blanks after I am with whatever you need. I am. I am your deliverer. I am. I am your healer. I am. I am your way maker. I am. I am your provider. I am. I am your wisdom. I am. I am your strength. I am. I am your endurance. I am. I am your faith. I am. I am your courage and your strength. Whatever you need God to be, he is just that at that moment. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6, for he that cometh to God must believe that the Lord is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, when we refer to the I am, you've got to let God be whatever you need for him to be in your life. I'm concerned that, 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 that in so many instances, we do not allow God to be whatever it is he needs to be in our lives. Yes, the songwriter wrote this song. He said, what a friend we have in Jesus, all of our sins and our griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to the Lord in prayer. And then he goes on further to say this. He says, oh, what peace we often forfeit and oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to the Lord in prayer. Beloved, I want to encourage you on tonight. I want to encourage you on this day to know that whatever you need God to be, he's just that to you. As your shepherd, he is the Lord of your life. In scripture, the word Lord is the Hebrew name Jehovah. It is the personal name for God that distinguishes him from the false gods. Our shepherd is not just any Lord. He is the Lord. The name Lord also implies his sovereignty. Before he can be your shepherd, he must become your Lord. That is the prerequisite for claiming the amazing promises of Psalms 23. Is. The Lord is. The Lord is. What do you mean is? The word is is an active present tense. It confirms that he is today and should be in the future your shepherd. He is. He's a right now God. He's not just a God we talk about who delivered the three Hebrew boys out of the fiery furnace. He's not just a God we talk about that delivered Daniel from the lion's den. He's not just a God we talk about that parted the Red Sea. He's a present God. He's omnipresent. He does not change. He is the same. Jesus Christ, the Bible said in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ, 
the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. He is. Is is the active present tense. It confirms that he is today and shall be in the future your shepherd. Just as he is David's shepherd, he also is your shepherd. That is no if or but. No, I hope he is. However, he simply is. Listen, William just gave me a sign for 10 minutes. He said, I only have 10 minutes left. I didn't have this problem, sir, tonight when I was doing the live. Amen. Uh, he just had a birthday to pass, and I'm going. To, we're going to raise an offer for him pretty soon so he can get a good watch. He needs a good watch. Amen. So, um, amen. Y'all tell William happy birthday Sunday. When, happy belated birthday Sunday when y'all see him. I give him an offering the day before I leave something on his new watch because obviously, amen, he's not giving me enough time here. All right. He said I ain't got but 10 minutes left, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to see. Amen. Now he is. So is this present tense. It brings us, it brings us into the now, the right now, presence tense. Now we often quote Hebrews 11, 1. We said faith is the something thing, hope for the evidence thing not seen. Yes, yes, we quote that. However, we leave one key word out. It says faith is the substance of things hoped for. But when you go back and read, it says now, N O W, in the present tense, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. So when we understand what faith is and we understand the significance of our faith and we understand that we need faith to please God, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how much you speak in tongues. You are going to have to have faith. Psalms 23 gives us an assurance, gives us a hope gives us a man comfort in knowing that God is who he said he is. He's going to do everything he said he was going to do. Now, he says, my, we're breaking it down word by word. The, the Lord is my. It's personal. I've just made it personal. My, it's personal. Oh, yes. We sing the song, yes, he's mine. Yes, he's mine. I got joy in my soul. Peace in my mind. We sing that song, yes, he's mine. You have to know that Jesus is yours. The one thing to say the Lord, is one thing to say that the Lord is the shepherd. And it's another thing to say the Lord is my shepherd. David used the personal pronoun, my. He did not say the Lord is the shepherd of the world in general. He declared that the Lord is a shepherd to me. He cares for me. He watches over me. It is personal. What is a shepherd? He, of all the many names, the Lord of the Lord that David could have used in this psalm, he was led of the spirit to use the name Jehovah Raha, which means the Lord, my shepherd. Why? Because the image of a shepherd tenderly leading, feeding, and caring for his sheep is a perfect picture of our Savior's relationship to his people. The most commonly word, the most, the word most commonly used for shepherd is Raha, which is also the Hebrew word for best friend. The translation of the word of this psalm includes both meaning. The Lord Jesus Christ is your shepherd and he's also your best friend. I've come to find out in this life that there are very few people who we can call friend. If you find one friend, and that's saying a whole lot, if you can find one friend in this life, amen, and just think for a moment, I just want you to just take the next few moments to just think about it. How many people can you truly 
call friend. How many people do you have that associate with you at this present time that you can say, oh, that's my friend. We friends. Oh, yes. But a friend is somebody that you that sees you at your best and knows you at your worst. A friend is somebody you can really share your secrets with and you don't ever have to worry about hearing them again. A friend is somebody who don't act funny with you. A friend is somebody that you can trust. Not many of us have people in our lives like that. But I thank God for the friend that we have in Jesus. In John 10 and 11, Jesus reveals himself as the shepherd is declaring, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. In John 10 and 14, Jesus declares, I'm the good shepherd and I know my sheep. Mm, 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 mm. Whew. He know my sheep. Not only that, but he says, I lay down. His, a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The very fact that the Bible reveals the Lord as a shepherd infers that he has sheep. Who are those sheep? According to the Bible, amen, the people are his sheep. In Psalms 103, it says, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. For we are his people in the sheep of his pasture. Jesus saw a multitude, amen, and he was moved with compassion for them because there was a, they were like a shepherd, and the Bible says in Mark 6 and 34, they were as a shepherd not having, they were the sheep, brother, not having a shepherd. He saw people as a sheep in need of a shepherd. The reason we need a shepherd is because Isaiah declares in Isaiah 53 and 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Because of sin, we've all gone in our own rebellious ways. Only through the death of Jesus Christ can we return to the shepherd of our souls. It's just that simple. Yet so marvelous and it's wonderful and so hard to fathom. Oh my God, the Bible reveals that there's one sheepfold, one sheepfold, uh -huh, and one shepherd. The fold is the church, which is composed of all born again believers. The shepherd is Jesus Christ. There's only one way into the fold, and that is through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. The sheepfold is not exclusive. The door is open to all that will come to him. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I'll be heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Well, I thank God tonight for the word of God, and I thank God for each of you. At this time, we're going to pause to see whether or not there are any questions pertaining to to the lesson on tonight. Well, beloved, we hope that you had some questions pertaining to the lesson. Amen. Now, we're going to be studying Psalms 23 all month. Amen. And, and you know, just read it every day. I mean, I encourage you to read it every day. Amen. Because the more you read it, I tell you, it's going to just soak in, sink in, encompass your heart and your mind. So I encourage you to read it every day. All right, listen, we're going to be back next week, same time, same place. Amen. Talking about Psalms 23. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we just want to tell you, thank you now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for life, for health, and for strength. We thank you for the anointing of God, the peace, and the power of the Holy Ghost. Now look upon these thy people and this thy servant. It is our prayer now, God, that you will continue to bless us and help us as only you can. God, and we're going to give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. But we recognize you as our shepherd and you as our good shepherd alone. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray these and other blessings. Thank God and amen. Well, friends, remember to join us next week. Same time, same place. Until then, be blessed is my prayer for you. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the evening. God bless you.
Thank you for watching Zion Temple Ministries. Be sure to tune in to worship with us via Facebook Live and YouTube each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on Facebook Live Stream and every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. for our Tuesday night teaching Bible study. You can also check out our worship opportunities by visiting our website at www.ztministriestn.com. If you would like to make contributions to the ministry, you can donate via Cash App or by searching Zion Temple Church of God in Christ via Givelify. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you soon.